All right, so there's a few people with their hands up. Dev, what's up? So I actually have a question. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So it's from Gate Mock Exam 3. Oh, yeah, Matt? just send it in the chat. Send it oh, in okay. the chat. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go through a few of these questions. Um, first one. Have you guys, you guys have seen this question um, in this week's mock exam, right? We had a very similar question like this. So do you want, actually, do you want to go through this question or is there any specific questions in this you would like to go through? Good. Yeah, this, yeah. Was this is pretty easy. Um, okay. Let me actually choose some of the harder ones. Uh, so in this question, I'll just actually quickly go through it. So if you take a look at it, there's two, um, there's two large paper clips, uh, three large paper clips and one small paper clip. And there's two large paper clips and one small paper clip. To find out the weight of, um, it says one small paper clip, how, how do you find it out? So the easiest way to do it is subtract this weight. Um, let me use this. Subtract, oh, actually spotlight, vanishing pen, perfect. So subtract this weight here from this weight, and then you'll get three paper clips minus two big paper clips gives you just one paper clip. And then one small paper clip minus one small paper clip gives you zero small paper clips. So 10 grams minus 7.2 grams will give you the weight of a single large paper clip. And that is how much? 2.8 grams, right? Yes. yes. And then if you know that one large paper clip weighs 2.8 grams, so you do 2.8 plus 2.8 and plus X gives me 7.2. So 2.8 plus 2.8 gives me 5.6. And 7.2 minus 5.6 is what? 1.6. Perfect. So that's how you do this question here. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, the other one. Let's see. Um, let me take a look. Yes, Kanchi, do you have your hand up? Or is that an accident? Oh, sorry. It was from before. Okay, no worries. Um, let me take a look. Okay, here's something I want you guys to keep in mind. Let's just say you're doing the gate test and you come across this uh, exam paper, right? Question one has one question to it. Question two has one question to it. Question three has one, two questions to it. Question pretty much five here has one, two, three, four questions to it. So obviously, um, well, because I've gone through this before last year, I don't remember all of it, but I do remember when I was going through it that the questions were getting harder as I went down, right? Um, it was very easy at the top and it started getting harder. But if you were to take a look at this one question here, right? Just by reading this bit of information, you're able to do four questions at the same time. So do you see how that saves a lot of time? So that's another tip I would give you. You know what I would recommend, guys? I would recommend, actually, so that we can save some time and um, focus on it. Instead of me going through every single question here, I think some of you haven't done this exam paper, right? So now that I've shared it in your WhatsApp chat, could everyone do that exam paper so that next week when you come in, I can go through the questions you guys got stuck on or you got wrong? Do you guys understand? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. that way, otherwise, you know, yes. I'm just asking you guys which questions do you want me to help you with, but not everyone has done the questions, so you don't know which ones to go through. So yeah, I'll send this to you. Uh, I'll send it to you already. So go through that. Um, here's another thing um, where they tell you all about your um, thing. So oh yeah, last week I don't know who said that you guys get a spare paper, paper but if you look at this question here, I um, mean this thing here. This is why we said we don't think you get extra paper. 
because it says you can use your test booklet for working through the question. Wouldn't that suggest that you don't get an extra piece of paper? So I think as, as we let you guys do as well, you can write in your exam booklet, but you won't get an extra piece of paper to do that. Melvin, yep. you don't get an extra piece of paper, but you only get an extra piece of paper in writing. Right, there you go. Um, I don't know which week it was, but someone uh, was very sure that you got extra piece of paper. And um, Melvin, can um, you ask them? Sorry? Can't you just ask them for paper? I don't think they'll give it to you. That's what I'm, that's what I think. Um, I, I think it might be now I might be wrong. Right. But I think it might be because they don't want people to write down the questions and take it out of the class. Maybe that's why I don't know, but yeah. So here's another thing too. Okay. Let's just quickly go through this instruction. Cause this will be useful for you. You have 35 questions to do in on mathematical material. Um, a lot of you, I mean, not a lot of you, a few parents have asked me, you know, if the questions needed science, but you don't need science. In the PowerPoint, it talks about science, but it's not science itself, but it's more logical reasoning or maths based questions, but it has a scientific flair to it. I'll show you what I mean later. For each question, you're given four possible answers, A, B, C, D. You must choose the answer you think is correct and mark its letter A, B, C, D in the OMR answer sheet labeled quantitative reasoning. Be sure that the question number on your OMR sheet corresponds with the number of question you're answering. Don't spend too much time on any one question. Use a gray lead pencil. Here's another tip. I think I've gone through this last week um, when I told you about the scary story. Use a 2B pencil. And why I say is a 2B pencil is it's pretty much what every testing center, uh, pretty much every test in the world recommends you to use because the 2B pencil is dark enough that it's easily scannable, but make sure when you're answering it, you don't write, you know, answer it very like, you know, don't fill it in very dark, just put a tap on it. And then later you can fill it in dark because let's just say you change your answer and you want to rub it out. It'd be very hard to rub out 2B because it's pretty dark. If you think you know an answer, mark it, even if you're not fully sure it's correct. If you decide to change an answer, erase it completely and mark a new answer. There you go. You have to erase it completely. By the way, I'm really glad we're going through this now because this is going to save you guys a lot of time in the actual gate system before you don't forget. No, so you um, put your hands up, please. Um, make sure if you change your answer, put your hand, um, erase it completely. Um, what else? You will have 35 minutes to do this test. Once you start this test, keep working until you have finished all the questions or the supervisor tells you to stop. Do not turn the page. Wait for the supervisor to give you a signal to continue. All right. Let me quickly show you what I meant by science-based questions. So there's this one question here. This one here. I love this question because um, this is based on a science concept or a chemistry concept that I remember studying for in year 12. Um, it's called redox or i think or oxidization stuff like that honestly i don't even remember as well i wasn't a very good student as you guys can tell but redox is the um it, it, it's a science where you look at different metals and how they react and based on the reactivity you can do a lot of cool things so for example most of you um if you buy gold jewelry unless it's pure gold um, if you can get this thing called gold plated jewelry and what a gold plated jewelry is essentially just a random base metal, right? Let's just say something like, I don't know, steel. I'm not, I'm not a jewelry expert, but you can get steel, put it in this like liquid thing. And usually the liquid has gold dissolved in it. And when you react it with another metal, I think they all like the other thing you put in is also gold. Again, I haven't studied this in so long, but basically what happens is using electricity, you can transfer the gold from the water onto this metal and you can coat it, right? And the same thing happens, for example, at you know shipyards, when you have those, you know, those long bridges that goes into the water, because they're made out of metal, they could easily rust. So they usually have a small battery connected to the pier so that the metal doesn't react and the iron doesn't, for example, rust and turn into iron oxide or something like that. But this question 
has a year 12 chemistry concept in it, but you're not expected to learn chemistry to understand this question. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yes, brother. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, so it's a bit misleading yeah. when they say that you need chemistry, like you need, it's a science and maths test, but it's not. It's mostly logical reasoning using maths concepts. All right. There's a few questions in the chat. Let me quickly answer them. What are HP pens? Okay. Can you write in? Oh, sorry. There's a lot. There's a lot of messages. Okay. What paper? I don't know what paper. Uh, my big brother says you can ask. All right. Dad, um, can you bring me some water, please? I think you should be muted, Arati. Um, but hopefully your dad gets you some water soon. Um, when is the last class? So it depends on which day you come in. Um, let me show you. So this will be... Oh, what? I can't share this. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. No, you no. can't. Can. No. Sorry. No. Yes. Okay. Yes. So there you go. Wow. So um, this, oh, yeah. uh, the next week on, oh, actually, the sixth, this will be the last day, last class. Oh, oops. No, not that one. The fifth here. This will be the last day for the Saturday students. The seventh and eighth will be the last day for the Monday and the Tuesday students. And the tenth and the eleventh will be the last day for the Thursday and Friday students. This will be the exam day. Oops, there you go, exam day. Um, our master class will be on the sixth. There you go, master class. All right. Um, let's see what else. Um, how about two HB pencils? Uh, HB pencils are slightly lighter than two B pencils, so. I would just recommend 2B pencils. Wait, so these questions are from past gay tests? That's what I believe. Do they give you a pencil? No, I'm pretty sure you have to bring your own um, pencils and stuff. Do we have to bring your own 2B pencil? Pretty sure. In the page where we shade our answers in, can we cross out the answer if you're changing it to another? Nope. As the instruction said, make sure you rub it out. Um, we will get an answer key. Will we get an answer key for mock exam four? Yes, you will. Do you bring your own pencil? Yes. Nice handwriting, Melvin. Thanks. What is a passing score? You need to get 210, which is the top 12% of students. So there's 6,000 kids doing it. I think you'll be, you have to be in the top around 600 kids. Do we have a mock exam next week? Yes, you do. All right. There's a few people with their hands up. I'll quickly go through it. Aarti? There's your hand up. You already answered my question. Perfect. Guy three? Um, when you're doing, um, when you're doing the writing in the gate exam, can you write yeah. with pen or do you have to write with a pencil? Uh, let's take a look. All answers must be in the OMR answer booklet. You have 25 minutes to plan and write. You may use either a blue, black, or gray lead pencil. There you go. So in writing, you can use a pen, but in maths, apparently you have to use a pencil. You are Thank to you. write in the writing section of your answer booklet. You take your time to read over. Your writing will be judged on the quality of your ideas, how well you organize your writing, how clearly you express yourselves. I don't see anywhere which ref anything that refers to vocabulary, punctuation, grammar, and things like that. Obviously, those are important, but that's not what you're being you know, marked on. There's a blank space for planning in the writing section. Um, write in the space will not be marked. The amount you write is not as important as the quality of your writing. So guys, don't worry about writing two or three pages. It doesn't matter how much you write. What matters is the quality of your writing. Marks will not be awarded for writing, which is not your own original work. I cannot emphasize on how many stories I've read, which are really bad copies of movies. So I remember this one student who wrote the entire story of player number one or something like that you know that movie it's like a gaming movie yeah, where you go into the metaverse and then you drive backwards or something oh ready player one yeah he wrote the inner story of ready player one now it's very unlikely that your gate marker will have seen the movie ready player one um because it's a movie about gaming but you never know because one of my students three years ago when i first started tutoring his english teacher made them watch ready player one so you never know. So please don't copy 
you know, movies that could be seen by teachers. Um, I don't know. Let, yeah. This is not a test of your handwriting, but remember, someone has to be able to read your writing. Oh, my dear. I cannot emphasize this point enough. There's a few students I think I've asked to make sure that your handwriting is good. Now, when I was a student, when I was especially in primary school, my mom would get me in a, like, she would always be like, Melvin, clean up your handwriting, clean up your handwriting. And I would always be like, you know, oh, mom, nobody cares. They're not marking my handwriting, blah, 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 blah. But guess what? Once I started tutoring and once I had to mark kids' writing, oh, when you have bad handwriting, it's a massive headache to read. Like, mark it. And imagine I'm an old English teacher sitting on my computer, right? Reading hundreds of marking to, sorry, hundreds of writings to mark. If your handwriting is bad, do you think I'll be in a good mood and I'll give you good marks? No. Exactly. No. So no. Sure. Make, sure you, make sure your handwriting is good. Why not? What do you mean, why not? Why not what? Never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. This was um, a picture that they got. Uh, again, if I were you, this should be pretty easy to write about. Here's a tip. When you see this image, don't write about an actual fish, please. Right? Think about what this fish could represent. Moment. You have a small Moment. bowl and the big guys. Remember, Kanji, I've said this to you every single lesson. Please put your hand up. Don't interrupt the lesson. Yeah, I'll answer your questions. One second. So, again, look at this image. The first thing you should think about is a big fish in a small bowl jumping into the big ocean think about what it could represent think about what's happening to all of you guys next year you'll be going from the big dogs or you know the the alphas or the cool kids in your primary school the year sixes to being the year sevens in high school you'll go from the big fish in a small pond to explore the huge ocean of high school so you can talk about something like that. You can talk about a student who is really afraid of graduating because then he'll go into the big real world and has to get a job and everything like that. You can write a story about, for example, I know a lot of your parents are immigrants. So you can write a story about how your parents left their home country to come to a whole new country where they possibly didn't know anyone, right? So you could write about that. Right? You can write about how they left everything that they're comfortable about to go to this big ocean with full of opportunities. So that's what you should write about, not about an actual fish. Please don't write about Nemo. Um, oh, yeah, these are the answer keys. Um, take a look at sound, the abstract reasoning. Okay. This test asks you to identify the missing shape or an object in a sequence. There are 35 questions in total. For each question, you're given four possible letters. You must choose the answer you think is correct. Yep, we all got that. Don't, don't spend too much time on any one question. Use gray lead pencil. Easy. You'll have 20 minutes. See, this is where it sucks. You have 20 minutes to do 35 questions. It's going to be pretty hard. Let's take a look at some of these questions. Um, here you go. Seems pretty straightforward. It's very similar to the questions that Jenny's been making for you guys this semester. Um, so if you guys have been practicing and looking at the questions we've been giving in this terms mock exams, you should be pretty good for these questions. It's very, very similar and useful. Um, are these the questions that we, that we are um, getting in the gate exam? Uh, yes, this is from an actual gate test, I believe. And finally, reading comprehension. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any extra instructions. The only difference is 35 minutes for 35 questions. Oh, here's a tip. I'm going through this, uh, reading comprehension. Let's say my name is, um, Gayatri, right? I'm Gayatri. Hey guys, I'm Gayatri. So I'm going to read this test. Okay. So wait, should I keep doing the Gayatri voice or go back to Melvin voice? Gayatri voice. Gayatri voice. I'm a really smart, okay, so my name is Gayatri. I'm a really smart student, right? 
So if I'm a really smart student, this is all we do. Hmm, okay. So we have Red Sands here, and Red Sands has four questions to it. But we have Whale Sharks here, and it has one, two, three, five questions to it. So don't you think it I'll do sucks. the Whale Sharks first? So if I'm a smart student, I'll do Whale Sharks first, right? Because I have more bang for buck here. I get to do five questions with the same amount of reading time. But even better, look at this. There's no reading time. It's literally just photos. And I have three questions. So if you don't have time, and I'm smart like Gayatri, I would be doing these questions first because I want to save time. Right, Gayatri? Yeah, very true. <laughs> it's funny how your actual voice is deeper than my Gayatri voice. Yeah, Melvin. <laughs> All right. So here's the, um, but yeah, that's what you should be doing. Um, try to make sure. Yeah. So if you, if you want to save time, do the questions, which has more um, questions per text than there is um, text per questions, I guess. I don't know. So like, take a look at this question. There's a really good example. This is basically a chart, not much reading to do, but it has six questions to it. But if I were you, I'd be doing these questions first. Cool. Oh, even this, look at this. There's literally no writing to do. I mean, reading to do. And there's three, only three questions. So easy. Um, there's one more thing I want to check if I can find, if I can show you. Uh, let's see. One second, Bear. Melvin, show us already. Um, dun, 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 dun. Melvin. Yes, that's my name. Um, can I like because my iPad's running out of battery? Can I join on my mom's phone? Of course you can. Okay. Um. All right. While this is loading up, I'll, let me just go through some of the questions. You sound like a chipmunk. Melvin. Cool. In the gate exam, um, like for generability, do we have to draw the answers? No, you just circle the answer. My cringe radar is beeping. Oh my lord. Abir, you don't have to roast me like that. What was it? Abir just roasted me. He said his cringe radar is beeping. You know, like the spider sense? Yeah. 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 Instead of the spider sense, Abir has a cringe radar. So he said that as cringy. And that's true. Very true, Melvin. Very funny. Stop <laughs> my name. Very funny. All right. Guys, you know that this is being recorded and put on YouTube, right? Um, Amazing. Amazing, Melvin. You cut us out, mate. Cool. All right, guys, please stop spamming the chat. I'll kick you out if you continue to do that. Um, I don't think they, they deleted it. So look at that. You're pretty lucky that I saved these because I don't think they have it publicly available anymore. But if anyone finds it, let me know. Because there's one thing that I want to show you, which was the bubble sheet, but I don't think we saved it here. Unlucky. All right. Anyways, that's pretty much most of the things here. Uh, again, guys, uh, just keep your hands up. And I'll quickly answer your questions. One second. Let me go through the questions you've sent in the chat really quickly first. So, um, How much score do you need to get into Perth mod? I think it's about 240, I believe. It's two. It's 247.56, I think. Noah. Mm hmm Cool. You will only you will only know after you do the exam. Yeah, because it changes every year. Uh, all right. Is there a separate bubble sheet or is it with the book? I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure it has to be separate because it keeps referring to the OMR booklet. Um, do we have to plan? I would highly recommend you to plan for your writing. Melvin, you said we'd be going through five writing concepts. We only went through two writing concepts. Um, which writing concepts do you mean? Can you write about an Indian movie or another religion? I would highly recommend you guys not to write about religion and politics. Um, cause they're very controversial subjects. Um, don't write stuff about, for example, recently, a really controversial subject right now is vaccinations. So don't write about, you know, persuasive text saying everyone should get vaccinated. What if, you know, your marker doesn't like vaccinations, etc. cetera. Um, Melvin, this was last year's writing topic. Yep, I believe so. 
Um, what would you write for this? Yep, I think I went through that right for the writing thing. In the real gate exam, will there be a few words like that? I believe so, because that's from a real gate exam. My friend from Loyola in school last year said that was the writing topic from last year. Yep. Could it be about freedom? Yes, that image could be about freedom. Do we have to write about both or can you choose if you write about the pick or the quote? Uh, well, see, Dion, they've given you both things, right? They've given you the image and they've given you the writing. So you should take a look at both. But if I were to use my example of the, like if I were to write the story about um, as this, for example, right now for me, right? I'm in my third year of uni, well, fourth year of uni now. Um, and I have two more years of uni left. A lot of my friends, excuse me, have graduated and they're about to start the real world. And for me as well, this is something, uh, you know, something pretty real. I'll, I'll have to graduate soon and leave the comfort of university and get a real job and things like that. Right. So if I write a story about myself as a character, I would, to make sure that I mention the image, what I'll say is I felt like a big fish in a small pond and I had to jump into the wild ocean where everything was an unknown. Um, it came with many new opportunities, but it also came with dangers as well. Do you understand? So I'm still making a direct reference to the fish. Um, what percentage do you need to pass gate? It's not a percentage. You have to get a score above everyone else. So let's just say everyone else does gets 30% and you get 35%. You'll be, you know, in the, I guess, above the 210 threshold mark or something like that. Um, da, 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 da. Do they always make confusing questions and abstract reasoning to do in 20 minutes? Uh, I guess so. I mean, it would be, some of the questions would be quite challenging. How many question points are each question worth? I'm not sure. If we get 240, is it certain that we'll get a spot of Perth mod? No, uh, it is not certain because it really depends on each year and how many students apply and how many students apply for Perth mod and things like that. Um, can you go through abstract reasoning? Can we see the poetry marking key? Um, do you mean our poetry marking key, Nilambri? If it's our poetry marking key, um, I think Rashini and your cast are... Um, they have the copy of it we haven't printed it out yet but i'll if i'll remember to show it to you guys next week on zoom if i remember should we go through all the short text first i will i would recommend that just so you can try get as many questions done um can we include communism in our narrative because in third mock exam i include communism and got pretty high marks that's interesting uh well it really depends um, how you talk about communism. I'm sure you didn't get marks because you talked about communism. I think you just had a really good story. Melvin, um, I heard on Friday class, oh, that's pretty funny. That's very funny. Don't we and have to make it a metaphor? Yeah. How much points do you have answered that? How many questions will be hard in generability? I have no idea. Apparently you get marked on creativity because it doesn't say anything about that on the cover. What does that mean? Can we write about any text? Melvin, would this be a good score for gate test? Yes, that's a pretty good score. What's the highest mark in gate? Well, technically the highest mark in get is 400, but I think it's pretty impossible. When do you think the results will come out? I think that's around June, July. I haven't got my bubble sheet from mock exam three. Um, ask the tutor, they, they should have it there. Uh, in the office. Can you write a poem um, instead of narrative? You can. It would be slightly harder to get good marks in it. I got 240. Is that good? Wait, Dion, what year are you in? For the practice the test, I uh, figured out the marks and then I do that, did that. Oh, right. No, 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 no. You can't use that as um, the 240 is not exactly your actual... Um, percentage scores it's a percentile score so it's what excuse me it's basically like a rank uh, that you get so like if you get a percentile oh. score of 50 i assuming that you got above 50 percent of the students if you get a percentile oh. score of 100 that means you got the top mark because you got a score higher than 100 percent of students um, um last which, which is impossible 
last year or the year before, I had a student who got a hundred um, in reading comprehension. So he got into Perth mod. Um, so you got the highest in the state for reading comprehension, I believe. All right. There's a few people with your hands up. There's about eight people with your hands up. Uh, if I answered your questions, could you put your hands down? Yeah, perfect. So there's still a few people with their hands up. So I'll quickly go through that. So Gayatri. Um, so for the masterclass, you know, the note taking competition, I've done my notes digitally. So should I like email to, um, email yes. them to PDF wise? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. So I should be able to send them by Saturday, right? Uh, you should send that ASAP. So we okay. will finalize our marking, um, I believe. Yeah. Wait, so yeah, let me okay. take a look at that. Let me take a look at the calendar. So this is the days here. So yeah. Yeah, you should send. So everyone, like, everyone should get onto it ASAP. Because this week is our final, like, class of doing the thing. Because next week will be all mock exams, right? Um, oh, actually, no, no. This will be next week will be mock exam. Oh, actually, I'm getting it all wrong. Just, I recommend everyone to bring your, um, you know, bring your um, notes as soon as possible. Okay. All right. Cool. What are the prices? I can't say that. All right, cool. Um, let's get started on any of the questions that you might have. So in last, oh, sorry. Ugh. I forgot there's the people with their hands up. So Tanov. When when will you post the um answer keys on, on the WhatsApp group chat for mock exam four? Yeah, so we finish it, we post it as usual, uh Tanov, after everyone's finished going through the exam. I think everyone's already went as have they or went nope, through the they haven't. Only the Saturday kids have done it. Oh, I thought I did it last week, mock exam four. No, as in after we've marked everyone's. Oh, okay, I get it. And another yeah. question. So is that is that is that gonna be the front of the gate papers for the next um year um this year? For Sorry? the the sample papers. Will yeah. they be um similar questions? I believe so. That's why I think they've given us sample papers, I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay, for the rest of you with your hands up, could you send your questions in the chat? Because I really want to get started on some questions. Um, and the remaining uh, few, I'll go through some of the questions from mock exam four. When does class end? When I say so. See, this is, as I mentioned, I think I told you guys, right? Why I love being a tutor. I love talking and having people. Because you talk. Yeah, I, I, I became a tutor because I love speaking and people listening to me while I speak. And as a tutor, you don't have a choice. You have to listen to me while I speak. It's like a, I'm a dictator. I, I listen to music. <gasps> Wow, I see. Well, we have you saying that live on YouTube. We'll be using that as evidence against your trial. Um, Melvin, I'll be the I'll winner for Melvin. Muted. Sorry? Our voice is muted in the YouTube video. You know that, right? I don't think so. We're not. It's okay. the, um, uh, the people who watch it. They can mute it or not. Okay. Um, yeah. So have you guys sent me questions for mock exam four? What subject is this? Uh, any subjects you'd like. We can go through a few questions. Melvin? Yes. Like, do you know the math um, paper? Like, the, the asset sample paper? 
Yeah. Uh, All right. Melvin. Yes. Um, when we um like go to the masterclass, do we have to bring like a paper ticket or like a digital one? Oh, you don't need to bring any tickets. The only thing you need to do is before the masterclass is to bring in your media consent form. So, so I think the Saturday students, except for the Nolamara kids, um, all the other Saturday kids, you should have gotten your media consent form last week in class, right? Yeah, I do yeah. tell us to give yeah. it next yes. week. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So bring it in next week. If you guys do forget it, um, you can uh, once again print it out on your on you know at home and bring it in on the day or email it earlier. So we do don't bring a ticket. You don't need to bring a ticket, but I would actually recommend bringing a notebook to take some notes because Jenny's class, you would be taking a lot of notes and it'll be really useful stuff. Um, if you don't get to take notes, for example, then um, we'll also be sending you the PowerPoints from that day. So there you go. Um, um, Melvin. Melvin. Yeah, wait, actually, guys, could you send your questions in the chat if that's okay? I already did. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Sorry. Um, it hurts my ears when you speak. That's not nice. For the monster class, my notes are in a different notebook as the rest of the kids. Is that okay? That's completely fine, Yasna. Sorry, we finished out of the notebooks. We should have bought some new notebooks just for you, Yasna. <laughs> I wasn't there in the last day of the mock exam. Should I send my narrative? Um, yes. Actually, no. Bring it into class next week. Oh, we're going to go through the quantum reasoning. Yes, we can go through this question. Uh, for the writing prompt you showed about, could you write about a person getting... Okay, for the writing prompt you showed us about a fish, could you write about a person who takes risk for freedom? That'd be a great story. Um, can you explain the writing topic? All right. So this is pretty easy of a writing topic, in my opinion. I think one of, by far one of the easiest writing topics you've seen gotten so far. So it's a series of chains that are linked up and the chains transform into birds flying in the air. If you think about, for example, what flying or birds flying represents, it usually refers to freedom. And what a chain represents? Suppression of freedom, right? Tying you up. So you could write a story about a person or an individual, maybe. They wanted to be an artist. And their parents said, no, you can't be an artist. But then they kept their talent hidden and they kept on making paintings and paintings. And one day they get recognized and they became a famous artist who could fly through the air. Or another example is... Um, let's just say that um, this boy lived in a country and that country had a dictator who did not let people have votes and stuff like that. And they had to do everything that the dictator said. Let's just say the kids from um, the kid is a boy in North Korea. And one day he decided that he's going to protest against all the issues. He comes together and he starts becoming a leader and he protests. And after a large protest, after a lot of, uh, you know, demanding, the finally, they took down the leader. He stepped down from office and they were they went from being in chains to freedom where they can vote again. I don't know. That's just another example. But any other examples where you go from, you know, being tied up to being freedom would be a good idea to talk about. What is a media thing? It's a media consent form. It's where um, we ask you to uh, fill in your details because, um, sorry, give permission for us to take photos because next week and next week during our final class and also the week after when we have our mock, the master class day we'll have photographers who will be taking photos so uh, because you guys are um, under 18 we'll need um, permission from your parents to take photos melvin yes can say no? you can what can we say no to taking photos of course you can say no of course you can say no the only thing is uh, to remember is when um the photographer or someone's going to take photos just let them know that you don't like to you don't want your photos to be taken that's all okay um hi melvin um have you marked my writing nope i've been very busy what do we need to bring to the master class some notes can you please go through Matt's questions yes okay i'll go through a few questions now Will you get a trophy with the highest mark in your school? I don't know if your school will give it to you, but we can give you a trophy if you get the highest mark in your school. We, that'd be pretty cool if you just let us know that you're the highest mark in your school. Um, yeah, Darsh has a really good question. 
could you write a in the writing topic could you write about the opposite of what happened so in this image we had a writing about freedom could you write about people trying to achieve freedom but not achieving it yes that would be anticlimactic but that'd be pretty cool and interesting where do we go when we go to Murdoch University so the name I will we'll send you more details about that um okay cool let me go through um some math questions so someone asked me to go through was a question number all right six let's take a look at question number six an unusual tower is built with cubes starting with one in the bottom layer then four in the second layer then nine in the third layer and 16 and so forth Another 91 cubes are used to build a tower. How many layers does a tower have? Well, if you the think about numbers. what's happening, sorry? The all square numbers. Yes, they're all square numbers. So it's going uh, one uh, two, sorry, one, four, nine, 16, next one should be 25, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all you gotta do is just start adding them up. So, so far, what were we up to? One plus four is five. Five plus nine is 14. 14 plus 16 is 30, I believe. Yeah, 30. Uh, 30 plus 25 is 55. Um, and then we have 36. 55 plus 36, what does that give you? 91. Perfect. So that should be six levels. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Um, do, 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 do. in gate if we don't have time to finish should we leave the story or have the uh, have a terrible ending that's really hard to answer um you should try to finish it because at least you can get marks for the ending i guess um all right let's see what else what other questions we have Matt's question number nine. Okay, let's take one nine. If D minus three N over seven N minus D is equal to one, which of the following statements describes D in terms of N? All right. Um, D is less than N. Sorry, D is four, four less than N. D is four more than N. D is three seventh of, three seventh of N and D is five times N. This question to solve it, the... First thing I recommend is it's like you have to kind of um, move the values around similar to how you solve an algebraic question. But as I've gone through in class with you guys, you can solve algebra questions when there are two different variables. So there's N and D, but what you can do is you can kind of like simplify it and keep them both in one end. So I'll try to write it down up here. So seven N minus D, we're gonna move this whole thing. We're gonna move this whole thing across. Oh, oops, this, why is it so big here? We're gonna move this whole thing across. When I move this whole thing across, what's happening here to seven n and minus d? Is it dividing, multiplying, adding, subtracting? Dividing. I'm saying. Yeah, dividing. So when you bring it across, what does it become? D minus three n divided by seven n minus d. Yeah, so when you bring it to the other side, it becomes multiplication because seven n minus d is dividing at this stage. So uh, if I write it out, it would go, oops, d minus three n is equal to one multiplied by seven n minus d. All right, d minus three n is equal to one times seven n minus d is the same as seven n minus d um and then you move the values across oh guys this is um i should have seen this straight away let's just say you have a number and you divide by another number and you get one what does that tell you about the two numbers they're the same number they're exactly. the same number exactly number. and that's why you can see here D minus 3N is equal to 7N minus D. So you don't really have to think about, you know, just do algebra, essentially. 
Um, and then, so we want to move n's to one side and d's to the other side. So I'm going to move this negative d to the other side and it becomes d plus d minus 3n is equal to 7n. And I'm going to move the three across. 2d is equal to 7n plus 3n. Because when you move something across, it becomes the opposite. So negative 3n becomes positive 3n, positive 3n. 2d is equal to 7, oops, 2d is equal to 10n, d is equal to 5, oh, sorry, 5n. So the answer is? D. D is five times n. Yes. Logan, I still have a question about this one. Go for it. So I don't understand how you went from 2D equals 10N to D equals to 5N. So let's just say um, two cars weigh 10 tons. How much would one car weigh? Let's say if they're the same, then it will be five. Yep, that's right. So 2D, so there's two Ds, right? We'll give you 10 tons, 10 Ns. So 1D will give you? One he would give us five. That's right. You get it? A, a bit, no, but then how would it... Oh, wait, no, 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 I understand, yes. Good man, good man. All right, let's take a look at the next few questions. Um, whoa, there's so many messages in the chat. All right, Nessa, question number 11. Let's take a look. Dun, 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 dun. TJ is making shapes out of identical rectangular cards called Harry's rectangles. Oh, Harry, is your rectangles. He makes two hey. of the following shapes. H, H equals shape X. H, H, H is equal shape Y. The perimeter of shape X is 64 centimeters and the perimeter of shape Y is 82 centimeters. What is the width of one of Harry's rectangles? Hmm, that is interesting. Harry, oh. answer the question. Sorry? Harry should answer that question. Uh, oh, Harry should answer that question. Uh, no, no, no. He only makes a rectangle. He doesn't answer the questions about the rectangles. So this is um, your length. Let's just say that. And this is my width. Oh, oops. It's a vanishing pen. I should use something else. Actually, you know what? Can I do something? I'm going to use draw stamp. Okay. I'll, this love heart will be length because it's L. So length, length length and I'll use um, this arrow of width, 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 width. And I, I'm not sure what this space would be. It'd be half length, right? So what I'll do is I'll do the love. It's not length. width. Yeah, because we can't say it's width. We can't assume it's width. So we'll put that, but it'll be a half star. Right. So we know that if I were to write it out, we know that one, two, three, three point five length plus one, two, three width, three width is equal to sixty-four. Sixty-four centimeters. centimeters. Good job. Melvin. said centimeters. That was a really nice centimeter pronunciation. Melvin. One I'm second, guys. Remember, please uh, put your mic up if you're going to ask a question, just so that um, we don't get a lot of spam. But who was asking me the question just then? Who was saying my name? Sahith. Go for it, Sahith. What's up? Yeah. You said 3.5. How are you sure that that's point, the half? It's half. That's true. Oh, no. I'm silly. Wait. Am I silly? Yeah, you are. I think... I think, yes. uh, wait. It can't be exactly um, half. You can't just what, assume. What that. I was thinking was, wait, no, you no. know what? If no. this is the width here, would this be the exact half as well? No, no, I don't no. Think it would yes. Be. yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. You can't, no, just, assume you can't just assume that. You've got to have information, actually. Yeah. You don't actually know what it is. 
not necessarily um half the width. Um, yeah, not yeah. that's true. Could One second, be. let me take a look at what the answer keys written about this. <laughs> we can look at the answer keys. You. You've already done the test. Yeah, but yeah, you already did the test. There's no point. But I can look at the answers faster because I wrote in my booklet. Yeah, but there's no point because you didn't. Didn't you mark it? No, I'm in the um Thursday class. Oh. If axis perimeter is made up of four length and two width, shapes Y is made up of four length and four width. So let me take a look at that then. So, Melvin. Um, so what Jenny's written here is shape. Uh, okay. No. Um, where? One second. Oh, two widths. <laughs> Melvin, you yes? have to use what? You have to use shape Y to figure out shape X. I don't. Sorry. You have to you use shape Y to figure out shape X. You have to sh sh yeah, I do, but I'm I'm just trying to uh, understand Melvin. where. So in the answer key, it says that Melvin. it is it is four lengths and two widths for this first one. What is the one, two, three, one, two, three. That's because three. one of the. Okay, let me take a look at this one here. So this is one length, one length, one length, and then width, 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 width. So we're missing this one here. And what Jenny's written is shape Y has, oops, shape Y is made of four is and four width. So yeah, so what Jenny's, uh, assuming that you would do is you would assume that this uh this when this rectangle's width is cutting into this h um shape this would also be a width melvin i'm logging yeah. in on my ipad that's completely fine go for that okay thank you but where's the fourth one melvin yeah so the one of the width in shape X, one of the widths and the unknown side is both equal to one length. Wait, oh, wait, what do you mean, sorry? So the second rectangle, the width plus the unknown side is one length. You are so smart, Steve. You are so smart. Remind me to get you a lolly for next class, okay? Hey, I thought about that as well. Melvin? But you didn't did say that. Say that as well. so, I, I said it in the chat. So if you take the, oh, did you? Yeah. No, oh, not. okay. I figured right. it out. So, Melvin, I don't know what. Access. So as to see mentioned correctly, oh. this line plus this line will add to a whole length. So this first shape here, we will have 4L plus 2 width is equal to, six, uh, where is it, um, 64 centimeters. I'm going to simplify. Uh, should I simplify it? No, I won't nope. simplify it. No, and then 1, nope. 2, Isn't it 3, three uh, wait, 1, oh, oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 length in this image plus... Mm -hmm. How many width? One, two, three. Melvin, I, Melvin I isn't it X, three width? X is nine. Sorry? Isn't three X is isn't nine. Isn't it three width? Three width? Where's the third one? Well, the top one. X. Like for shape X. Wait, one second. I'm going to mute everyone really quickly. So I'll ask people with their hands up. Okay, one second. There's a lot of you talking. I'm getting so confused. This should be a simple question. So I'll do this as the length. So we have a length here. We have a length here. We have a length here. And then this plus this section here should give me one length. Perfect. So I'll erase 
this here. Oh, oops. Erase that. And I'll add the heart there. Perfect. And then the width, um, we have, oops, we have one width here, one width here, one width here. Now, Jenny's mentioned that this question has one more um, width. Which one am I missing? The one on um, this one here, that, right? Yeah, that's right. That's nice. That makes sense. Okay, cool. But before oh. you said it was a width, but you never marked it. Sorry. Because before you said it was a width, and then you forgot about it, and then you didn't mark it. Ah, uh, right. I see. And then, yeah. So back to the the section here. Um, four L plus four width is equal to um, eighty two. And to essentially solve it, you what you should do is make one of the equations negative, the whole thing. So negative four L, and make this negative four W is equal to negative eighty two. Actually. It'll be easier if you do the top equation as negative. So negative 4L, negative 2W, and negative 64. And you just add them together. 4L minus 4L is equal to zero. And then 4W plus negative 2W is equal to 2W. And 82 plus negative 64 is equal to? What? 18. And then? W is equal to? Nine. Nine. Melvin, I actually did another way, but like it's kind of similar to the end. Yep. What did you do, Dev? So I technically, I just kept it with 3.5 plus, yep. plus 3. And then I was just like, yeah. 0.5. Yeah. 1.5 yeah. the 3 is also adding was 18. And then I divided by 3, 6. And then since I wanted to make it 1, I times it by two, so that equals, um, that would equal 12. And I know that that is the small, all of those are smaller than that. So 12 would be the length and 12 times four is 48 and 82 minus 48 is 34, which can be divided by four, ti four times nine. Okay. Wait, but Dev, I'm going to stop you there. Um, if you write up that for me, I'll take a look at it. And if that's a good alternate solution, we'll put it in the answer key as well. But um, it is six o'clock, mm. so no, I, I'll have to pass on to Maria on. now. No, no, the rest of you guys, question. if you have questions, send it in the chat, and I'll stay back. Um, and one second. So what I'll do is I'll open up the chat so you can. Um, so I'll open up the chat where. Um, Minus. You can um, send me a direct message. But Maria will still be the host. So I'll stay back for a bit longer so you can send me questions that you want me to answer and I'll answer it now. But make sure you're sending it directly to me, all right? Okay. Um, let me find Maria. Rianne, please stop drawing it. I didn't mention it before, but if you continue to do that, I'll kick you out of the class. Thank you. Melvin, can we have a break? No, unfortunately, we have to get started now because Maria has a really interesting class ready for you guys. <laughs> oh, what? Are you guys sure? Sorry, yeah. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello Maria. Hi Maria. When did you start wearing glasses? Um, I don't wear glasses anymore. Actually, they don't work. So these glasses I wear when I have a thing called gecko eyes. So gecko eyes are when your um. Has anyone ever seen how a lizard's eyes kind of sit at the the corner, uh, like, or they kind of bulge out? And they like go cross-eyed a little bit. Yes. I wear my glasses when yeah. my eyes go get the eyed I can't help it. So it I wear ends. blue light glasses to prevent my eyes from getting the damage from blue light. Oh, you know what I just found out the other day from my eye specialist? Blue light glasses don't actually work. And I was so devastated because I was like, 
I'm going to buy one in every frame, you know, make it super pretty. So now I just use them to cover my gecko eyes. Um, but I love gecko eyes, so I'm not really, you know, going to sit here and be like, oh, they're so gross. Anyways, I hope everyone is doing really, really super well today. Um, I caught the end of your lesson, so I know that Melvin will be sitting behind and he'll be taking additional math questions um but yes make sure you send them to him because god forbid you send them to me i will have no idea how to help you but um it'll be interesting anyway what we're going to run through today is i'm just going to see where you guys are sitting in the grand scheme of things with your comprehension strategy so i'm going to take a hand up in a second i noticed that already people have their hands up which is i love you know i love a good hands up um but if your questions are not english relate related uh, do you mind sticking your hand, uh, like, or just dropping your hand? And that would be really, 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 really helpful um, so that I can go through the comprehension strategies and ask you to stick your hand up if I um, have a question for you. Oh, my God, there are, like, 100 people in the class today. That's so awesome. I don't think I've been in a Zoom class where there are that many people. Anyway, so we are going to go through comprehension strategies, and I'm going to add on to what we've been doing um previous in previous weeks okay so um me talking about certain strategies like the summary writing for comprehension daily exercises uh being consistent with your daily exercises and how to properly un uh, interpret the feedback that your tutor is giving you pretty much um just because i feel like I think I need to be a little bit more technical in terms of how we summary write just in the last two, three weeks, getting you guys absolutely, you know, building the right habits in the last few weeks. Anyways, um, does anyone have any questions before we start? If you do not, can you drop your hand and that would be really, really appreciated. Um, I'm Sahib, do you have an English related question, my friend? Oh, sorry, that's just from last class, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, 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 hey, Maria. Guru? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I've asked, answered the majority of questions, um, but so if, could you be um, change the chat settings so that it can people can only message the host and the co-host? Yeah, um, the chat settings. Or I can take back, did you find it? Um. I can take back. No, also. you know what? You take it back and then you change it. All right. <laughs> I'm not technologically advanced, my friend. Okay. Anyways, as we know, we also have some housekeeping as well. So please always raise your hand in my class. Keep questions topic related. If you have a question you are dying to ask me that is not on based on what I am teaching, um, save it to the end. And then I will go through it with you right at the end. Okay. Um, also, guys, make sure that the chat is appropriate to what we are learning as well. I know that we've talked about it in previous lessons, but I just want to make sure we recap that now. I want to make sure that everybody has the same learning opportunities today. Okay, so first thing we want to go through today with you, or I want to go through today, is your summary writing. All right. Now, we know that summary writing builds what particular skill? Can someone raise their hand and tell me what kind of questions uh, are built and you become better at by summary writing? No, 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 no. Ten participants raised their hand. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to ask Alina. That was from before. I just wanted to tell you that there was lots of people spamming the chat because it's really distracting. Oh, okay. Well, I uh, well, we went through the whole guys keep the chat up for a bit, so I can't really spell them off again. But thanks, Alina. All right, Aaron, can you answer my question for me, please? Yeah, that those um summer writings are mostly for like literal questions. Good. Now, Aaron. If you are summary writing, do you just read the text and then write down what you remember or should you organize your thought in some way? Organize your thought in some way. Do we know the best way to do that, Aaron? Like you read a sentence and then you like um, write what you understand from that and you just keep on doing that or you can just do it like for a paragraph, each paragraph. 
Good. Yes. Another way that you can do that. Um, another way that you can do that is we separate our who, what, when. Okay. I can hear someone singing, guys. Just make sure you're always muted unless you are asking me a question. Okay. So we separate each of these sections. All right. And then we write our notes. So X, Y, Z, whatever, whatever. And then what I want you to do is I want you to think about the best order those five W's should be placed in because you should not be writing your summary in the order you write your notes for this. So just because I've gone with who, what, when, that does not mean that my passage should be structured as who, what, when. Sometimes we need to merge um, particular um, particular um, sections such as the who and the what, we need to merge them together into one passage so that we are grammatically correct when we're writing. Now, the reason we do this is um, one of the literal questions you can get is order of events, okay? So the order of events requires you to go, okay, which order, uh, which went where and why did it go there? By making sure that we're structuring mm -hmm. our paragraph correctly and in the right order, uh, mm -hmm. based on our grammar rules and yes. chronological order, we're able to target that particular kind of oh. question. Now, I don't know whether the next marks you get will have um, which is the correct order kind of question, oh. but I can tell you that most literal questions will focus oh. on taking events from the text exactly as they oh. are and changing something very, very simple to kind of throw you off, okay? So I just wanted to make sure that we were organizing it properly so that when you do come across a question like that, you are not absolutely stumped, all right? Now, the next thing that I wanted to go through very, very briefly was your daily exercises. Now, I know that we have 101 different kind of teachers, 301 different extracurriculars. Trust me, I've been there, I've done it. And it's very, very stressful, so don't worry. If you cannot do English on a particular day. You have soccer, then you have math, and then you have a language tuition. I'm okay with that. But what I would suggest leading up to gate, and especially now, you do a daily exercise. You set a timer for two minutes and you focus on describing a setting you can see. Now, by doing this, we are practicing the vocabulary that we know and we are experimenting with what we can achieve within two minutes pretty much. Um, for this particular thing, I know I go on and on about it, but I promise you it works. The two, four, six, eight exercise. Maybe Monday you do two minutes, Tuesday you do four minutes, Wednesday six, Thursday or Friday eight, okay? If you do it like that, you are remaining consistent and you are still continuing the skill. Okay, so I know it gets a little bit stressful leading up to it, but make sure that you are working on the things that you can change now, not learning new things. Right now, it's about uh, weeding out the little, little kinks in what we've done and not solidifying bad, bad habits. Okay, um, in terms of solidifying bad habits, by the way, um, I'll jump down to the feedback section here. Also, you'll notice that my notes aren't as fabulous and flamboyant as the usual today. I do apologize for that. I could not think of the design to bring to life the way um, I put all into a very neat document. Someone asked me in the chat whether it is too late to study. It is never too late at all. If you haven't already started preparing for English or doing the daily exercises, that's okay. Remember, I said that leading up to the exam, I would not teach you or tell you something that wouldn't be achievable in a short period of time. So no, it is never, ever too late to study, okay? So um, speaking of solidifying bad habits, what I've noticed is um, we might give feedback, all right? Well, I particularly might give feedback to a student but then I'll see the same mistakes in their homework the following week, or I will see them repeating particular mistakes when they are stressed out or under time pressure, okay? Now, the best way to combat this is before you sit a timed activity with either a tutor, at home, if you're just practicing, even before you go into your next mock exam, read the feedback that has been left on your creative writing. If in the last mock exam, you got feedback that says you used minimal figurative language and your conflict was not established, 
what should you be doing during the week? Your daily exercises should be focused on describing in two minutes or four minutes and picking exactly what to do or what to work on or planning out your plots properly and going, okay, well, I know that I was weak in this area. Why was I weak in this area? And um, considering we, I know we go on and on and on about this, but feasible conflicts and feasible or realistic, I should say, resolutions. Sometimes I think we panic and we come up with very, very inappropriate conclusions. And I don't mean like, oh my God, that's so mean or nasty kind of conclusions. I mean, the conclusions we pick do not fit our narrative. So just to recap, to make sure everyone's on the same page, make sure you are reading your feedback before you go into any test you do or before you practice. Um, okay, based on the chat, is it okay to do a writing every day? Is All I do is writing every day. I like that you write every day. I also write every day. I think that's um, a habit of mine. And I think it can only make you a better writer if you are practicing the right thing. Dion, is it okay to end with a sad ending? All right, um, speaking of endings and conclusions, please avoid killing off your main characters. It does not reflect higher order thinking when you are writing a narrative. It, I call them again, like a cop-out conclusion where you couldn't think of what to do with your main character. You created a conflict that was too difficult to solve. And so your solution then was to kill off your main character. Do not do that. Um, that does not mean that you can't have a sad ending, all right, in your narrative. Um, but to Dion, who asked the question, yeah, uh, what do you mean by a sad ending? Could you give me an example, Dion? So, like, um, you have a family, and like, like your dad influenced you to be like a great character, but at the end, you're the main character, but the dad dies, like a sad. Yeah, that's okay. As long as we maintain Chekhov's gun. Um, Chekhov's gun, as I've said previously, is if um, the basic principle is if someone mentions a gun at the beginning of their narrative, that gun must then relate to the plot or be important to the plot, in which case it goes off by the end of the narrative. So if, right, you, you want a sad ending, make sure you are consistently and subtly, and subtly means like not saying, oh, the dad was sick, but hinting mm -hmm. at the fact that the dad will die at the end. Mm -hmm. It should not be an unexpected mm -hmm. sad ending, Dion. Yeah. Give me a little bit of a hint that maybe something is wrong with the dad. Maybe he's, you know, wanting to spend more time with his kid, but the kid is always busy. Or maybe he's trying to make an effort with his kid and go, oh, do you remember that time we did this? And the kid is like, yeah, dad, never mind. Mm -hmm. Hint yeah. that it, he is you know, trying to spend time and maybe is, you know, coughing into his sleeve so that it's not a complete shock to me when you kill him off at the end. That would be, so, that um, would help you to maintain a feasible slash realistic yeah. conclusion, okay? Um, yeah, so um, if you, like, um, I did a practice story and, like, I had a soccer ball in it and I mentioned it at the start and then it, it had meaning to it at the end. Like, that was the main point of it. So would that be wow, like that's really good. Um, I like the fact that you maintain Chekhov's gun because sometimes it can be very difficult to do that. So yeah, that's that sounds very interesting. The fact that you gave that soccer ball meaning towards the end. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, sorry, moving on. I am going to break from my explanations every now and then to make sure that I answer the questions in the chat because I know that I've been very slack on answering questions in the chat in previous weeks. So when practicing English, yeah. what should you study the most? So moving forward, like I said, practicing the most, practice what you are weakest at. If you feel like you are weakest at writing under time pressure, set a timer and write. If you feel like you tell rather than show, focus on building your descriptive language and write sentences using any new vocabulary you learn. Writing sentences or including vocabulary into your everyday conversations, even if no one understands the word you are including and they kind of look at you as uh, like, oh my God, what, what, what did she just say? That's okay. You are practicing using the word in different contexts. So um, for me, it's always bolster your vocabulary because that is very easy to fix in a very short period of time. So Tanya, work on your vocab. Dev, for a sad ending, could we do something like describe events which keeps you busy? 
Um, remember, we do not do cliffhangers. I would like resolved plot lines, not plot lines that end in a cliffhanger, purely because um, I think we agreed very early on that, um, I think we agreed very early on that it would be a bad idea to end on a cliffhanger. So avoid it and come up with a resolved ending to like a resolution, sorry, to the problems that you create in your narrative. Oh, okay. So moving on. Awesome. Um, okay, I noticed. Oh, is someone talking to me or? Okay, anyways, Tanya, you have your hand up. Do you have a question? Sorry, that was no accident. That's okay. Um, I have a question. Sharon, do you have a question? No, sorry, that was accident. All right, guys, if you do not have a question, please stick your hand down. All right, moving on. I have a question. I have a question too. Okay, 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 okay. Um, to the Stay with me. Said, I, uh, okay, to the person who just, okay. Um, Guru, you go first. Because uh, I can see your hand up. Uh, is it true that all the um, uh, reading comprehension answers are correct, but you have to choose the most relevant one to the comprehension? Um. Guru, I love the question. It is slightly off topic considering we are talking about um, using, you know, how to improve. But with the with the comprehension, yeah, most of the time, and if you look at the comprehension that you're getting on the mocks, most of the answers will be like, oh, my God, they're all correct. Um, yes. So you should be picking the most correct answer every time. Even if you feel like, um, oh, no, there's definitely differences in the answers. Always choose the answer, just rule of thumb, always choose the answer that has the most amount of evidence because nine out of 10 times you'll be correct, Guru. Okay. No problem. Hashika, question, and then I'm going to go to Moral. Um, when you're doing the um, exercises, is it good if you um, look at your mistakes and then write a, another story or something? Yes, 100%. I definitely, definitely um, think you should be doing that. Um, I'm someone who goes, a tutor will not put feedback on a page unless it is absolutely essential to your narrative. So if you ignore feedback, it's likely that you're going to keep repeating those mistakes. So yes, please always check um, on things that you haven't done previously. So well in and then start writing and doing an activity. All right, um, Cristiano iPad, and then I'm going to go to morals. Oh yeah, um, oh, yeah, sorry, I accidentally put my hand up. I have a That's okay. Um, I had a question about the um, practice. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, what is it, Dion? Uh, um, for the two, four, six, eight, um, do we, are we writing about the who, what, where, when, why? The... No, no. Comprehension strategies and creative writing strategies, there is only one thing that will ever, ever cross when you do that, and that is your vocabulary. So if you are practicing your vocabulary for creative writing, you are then also improving your comprehension skills. But every other strategy I teach you is very separate to either comprehension or specific to creative writing, if that makes sense to you. Uh, so for the 2468, and uh, what are we writing that? The... Um... Oh, so for the 2468 okay. exercise, you set a goal within two minutes, such as uh, in my feedback, it said that my descriptive language is really weak. So in two minutes, what you do is you pick something, whether it's a lamp in the corner of the room, it's the desk, it's the sky outside, and in two minutes, you describe it to the best of your ability. Now, if you are working on the 2468 exercise based on feedback, what you would do is you would go into your feedback and you'd say, oh, okay, I didn't score so well in paragraph one. And in two minutes, you would try to rewrite it based on the feedback that your tutor has given you or in four minutes. Push yourself with the time limit. A lot of people will stand, tend to start at eight minutes and work their way down rather than work their way from two all the way up, if that makes sense, Dion. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, last question in the chat because it makes a lot of sense. Adik, if your tutor doesn't realize, or if your marker doesn't realize what word you've used, that's not a fault on your own. If they go, oh, what word is that? They will search it up. They will never go, oh, 
um, that's not a real word. They will make sure that if you use any interesting vocabulary, that um, they will I go and define it. And if they can't find the definition, then you won't get the marks for it. But I would say that um, the gate markers, because this is a gifted and talented, you know, looking for gifted and talented students, they would be quite well, well versed with very complex vocabulary. So you don't have to worry about them not recognizing a big word. All right, now morals. I had a lot of questions. I have a question. Yeah, that's okay. I know, I'll come back to you, don't worry. Um, so with the morals, and I know that everybody has, a, um, has, you know, a couple questions with morals because I still see people stating their morals at the end. Very, very good questions to build your understanding of morals is to incorporate them through your characters, okay? If your character develops, i.e. they are first a very selfish, and I'm going to use very basic examples. They are very selfish and mean and horrible, and maybe they are, I don't want to use the word bully because I don't want to encourage you guys to write about bullies, but if they maybe are a bit of a bully and the conflict is something happens that changes their whole perspective, right? If your character then develops, you are including a moral without trying, okay? You are focusing on another aspect. And that is how I learned to include morals, by focusing on uh, other aspects of narrative writing and rather than going, oh my goodness, how do I state a moral? Because when you focus too much on the moral, you end up stating it and being like, and she learned her lesson that she should never be selfish and not share with people, okay? Now, guys, if you have questions on the 2468 strategy, please go into the gate prep book that um, was given out at the very first term that I taught you guys. Right at the end, there is an example and an explanation from A to B, but right now I'm going to stick with morals. Okay, anyways, so if you feel like you struggle to include morals, I've included a couple questions below that can give you some guidance into how you can incorporate morals or how you can practice your morals, all right? So the first question is, is it always good to be right? Now, I know people have their hands up from pre-existing questions. So if you do not want to be picked on to answer this question, I suggest you quickly put your hand down. But I'm gonna go with Artie. Yep, she dropped her hand as soon as I said that. But I'm still gonna pick you because um, I know you can give me a very decent answer for this. I'm sure you can. Artie? Yeah. Yeah, is it good to always be right? Um, I would say no, because that way you can learn. Mm -hmm. But what if I feel like I'm right all the time? What does that say about me? Um... You're not really like open to suggestions and ideas. Okay, good. And what happens to a person, you know, long-term, so maybe over a year or their entire lifetime? Mm, guys, make sure you are on mute unless you are asking a question. What happens to a person if they never listen to the advice of others or always think that they're, they're right in the long-term? What happens to them? I guess their knowledge would kind of like decrease mm -hmm. because they're not really open to ideas and suggestions. Good. Would you want to help someone like that? Someone who always believes that they're right? Um, I, yeah, I, I say I would. So you you definitely would, even if it's someone really annoying who's like, whenever you try to help them, they're like, no, I know what's best. You would still want to help them? Um, now I'm rethinking. Um, I would, like, it would depend on who it is. Because mm -hmm. I don't really like everybody. <laughs> I like that. That's good. I also don't always like everybody. But that is a decent answer. So well done. The next thing I want to ask, and I kind of want to broaden your understanding on this, guys. But when we ask the question, is it good to always be right? Is there a point in anybody's life where they are going to be always right or they are seen as always right? Um, 
Now I'm going to ask um, someone random whether there is a point in a person's life, think about it age-wise, where they think they are always right or we see them as always being right. Can someone give me at least one example of a person who at any age might we might see as always right? Um, I think I know. Uh, Deb, okay. So... I would be like someone older than you, like very older than you. So let's say we're a little child and we would always think our parents are right. If we don't know the whole world, we might be like always like our parents are always right. They're always doing everything for the good. Right. And I really like that. Well done. A parental figure. Yes. When we grow up, we are, uh, as we grow up, we are taught that our parents are always right. And right now at your humble age of, um, I'm assuming 11 and 12 or 10, 11 okay. and 12. Um, if anybody is older than that, I apologize. Uh, yes, you should think that your parents are correct to guide you because they know best at this stage, right? But as we grow up, we experience different things that change our perspective on what is right or wrong. Now, the example that I thought of when I thought of a character who I would always see as right or a person I would always see as right and not question and be like, you know what, they're probably right, would be my grandmother, okay? Now, the reason I wouldn't see her as, you know, we saw, talked about a lot of people are saying, oh, if you think you're always right, you're overconfident, right? But what if you have lived such a long life that you are full of wisdom? And so even though I might not understand what my grandma says is correct, I still go, hmm, because of the experience she's had and the life she's lived, it's most likely that she is right. I just can't see it right now. So one of the ways that we can include that moral is we talked about two different things. We talked about experience. We talked about uh, characters, older characters especially. And something Dev mentioned was really good. The fact that our parents guide us and we understand what is right and what is wrong from them. So when we include little aspects into our character development development, or into our narrative focused on the experiences our main characters and side characters go through, it is very easy if we answer those questions to do it through those things. So I know that sounded a bit confusing because it confused me as well. But if we include an experience, right, it's most likely we'll be able to naturally involve a moral without trying, okay? Now, again, the things... I cannot be more explicit with it. These are very small changes you can do in a short period of time to improve your narrative writing. Um, now, someone says they keep getting, um, keeps getting kicked out. Um, that is okay if you wanna leave and come back. I know that it's not your fault. I'll keep adding you in, don't worry. Uh, going through the questions very quickly. Yes, thank you guys for answering the question in the chat. That's so good. Could you please send the program? When are uh, phone calls? Maria. Okay. Um, yes, I know that there are a bunch of hands up, but I'll take that question. I think it's Marsha's iPhone. Marcia? Maria. Um, yes, whoever is uh, asking for help, I cannot find you right now. So uh, go ahead and answer the question or can ask I, a question. Can I leave now? You are more than welcome to leave when you want. You never have to ask me. That's all right. Okay. Anyways. No Maria. Problem. Maria. Uh, yes. Yeah. Guys, again, I'm not going to answer questions if your hand's not up because I can't see Retro. Arty, hit me up. What, what is your question? And then Thanu. I had another one for like a character. Yeah? Okay, awesome. I would say a teacher because like when I was young, when I thought of, about a teacher, I would think they're like so saint because like they tell people off sometimes and they seem so good. Ooh, I like they that. Seem, they seem powerful. <laughs> oh, wow. I like that. I would not have thought a teacher. The reason I would not have thought a teacher is maybe because I, I didn't necessarily like all my teachers in high school, so I, didn't, I wouldn't have made that connection. So thank you for pointing that out. That's a good one. So that particular moral comes through character development. 
Now, the next question is, do we all behave the same? And what are behaviors that we share? Thano, can you answer that question for me? Do we all behave the same? I don't know what we're doing. I just came back from a, um, one, and I had a question from before. All right. Um, I'm going to, can you ask, answer this question for me then? And I'll get back to you about your question after this. Do we all behave the same, Thano? Where is it? I'm, I'm asking it, but it's also on the iPad in front of the screen that I'm sharing. Um, no. No, we don't behave the same. What makes our behavior different? Our attitude. Our attitude. So is it our attitude to us what, Thana? Can you give me an example? Well, um, maybe when you're trying to achieve something that's good for you, you don't have, and you're not interested in it, you need attitude so then you can achieve it. So you need like a positive attitude or a more motivated attitude yeah. for that. Yeah. Good. All right. Awesome. I like that. I like the fact that you mentioned attitude. So you think that our attitudes are different. Well done. Now, the reason I bring this question up and the reason I think that it works very well with morals is because what I used to do at the beginning of my narrative is I would have a statement. So um, again, um, hook, 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 hook right? So statement, question, quote, I would have a statement about human nature, the way that we behave. And I would have a very simple and broad one. Uh, it might be a rhetorical such as, do we all behave the same? If so, why or why not? In terms of whatever the statement was, I would base it on human nature. The reason I do that is I can show that I understand what is going on in the world around me. All right. So if I am able to focus on the way my characters are behaving within their narrative, that is another way I can very naturally include a moral. All right. Now, I know that people are going to ask for an example um, later on, which is OK. Um, I think previously someone asked me whether they could have a 25 minute narrative or a good example of a narrative. So I wrote one and it includes the especially this part here and how to include a moral through human nature. So um, human nature, if anybody's confused by what that is, it is just how humans behave. Now, Hunter said in the chat that we do behave the same and that is not incorrect. There are shared behaviors that we have. Um, one of them might be, and I, a, a shared mm -hmm. behavior is a, a very simple one, is the fact that we need to have a shower every day. We need to feel clean. We need to have a routine. We need to eat every day. Those are very, very small behaviors that we all have in common. Um, another one might be greed or being selfish. And now it sometimes being selfish isn't the worst thing. So if I was to write about a character being selfish, but in a positive way, that would also be very interesting to my marker, all right? So if anybody is wondering about that 246 exercise and whether you can work on your morals in the 246 exercise, you absolutely can, okay? Especially for these questions. Now, would you do it in narrative form? No. Would you answer these questions to the best of your ability in four minutes? Yes, because expanding your understanding and sitting there and actually pondering, oh, what is the behavior I share with someone else that might not be very good? That is going to help you with your narrative writing, especially including morals in your narratives, okay? Um, okay, I know there are a bunch of hands up. So Ariana, what is your question and how can I help you? My one, um, it was for, what was it? Um, oh, it was for some other question that you asked earlier, so. Okay. That is okay. Um, Sorry. Also, I know people have a bunch of comprehension questions, which is why in the last half now, oop, now, I was hoping to go through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blitz through the rest of my um, advice moving forward for you guys. And then whatever comprehension questions you have, you can go ahead and ask me. So very quickly, um, 
constructing confidence. Last week, I talked about the fact that I was not so good with maths, right? And then I said, you know, no, 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 I shouldn't say that. I was very proud of my math score because I worked very hard for it, all right? What I would like you guys to do in terms of building your confidence in writing, I'm not saying you need to take like a positive outlook on things and you need to change the way you feel about it. I can't make you like English if you feel like, ugh, you know, writing isn't my thing. I can't make you change your mind on that. But what I can do is I can help you construct confidence going in and these were the three things I did to fake liking writing persuasive writing but it can just as well be used in narrative writing I now like persuasive writing but back when I was doing that plan it always scared me more than I hated it okay so the first thing is before you sit the gate exam and I mean the week of okay so before you walk in there I want you to allocate one hour okay in terms of your studying to taking the worst mark you have ever gotten for a narrative which story you got zero which story you got 10 out of 50 and I want you to sit there and I want you to rewrite it based on every skill you remember that has been taught to you from um, that point onwards so you rewrite the narrative and you make it better okay when we see our progress in front of us it builds confidence it goes oh my god look how terrible I used to be and now look how baller I am today look how amazing things are going for me right now now I did that with one narrative that I ended up taking into gate which was that adventure one at the time in my big brain I thought that um you know writing about being stranded on a deserted island was a fantastic idea um looking back on it potentially not but oh well um so yes take the worst story you've ever written and then impart all the skills that you've learned, all right? And again, that whole read your feedback before you attempt it, very important, okay? Now, the next thing you need to do, and we talked about the five-second rule with the comprehension strategy, right? Um, we talked about the comprehension strategies, uh, the, the five-second rule, when you see something you don't like, you have five seconds to change your mind, right? Uh, Yes, that does work for comprehension, but whether it works for the prompt you get in gate for the narrative writing, hmm, that can be a little bit difficult. You need to have a little bit more confidence when you approach the task. So what you should do before you walk into the gate exam is you should say and go through very difficult to interpret, um, like a variety of metaphor interpretation. Now, what I mean by that is go on to... Um, all your past mock exams and look at the most difficult metaphors that you've had to interpret. And I want you to come up with two metaphors from those images. Now, the reason you would do that is to build the confidence and go, hey, if I can do something really hard, nothing can be harder than this. And if you can work yourself up and believe that you are confident when it comes to approaching the metaphors, you will not be scared or, let me some vocab for you, daunted. D-A-U-N-T-E-D, buy them, okay? So fake it till you make it is the main point of this one. Build that confidence, do a very, very difficult metaphor interpretation the week of and go, oh my God, if I can do something this hard, I can do something very easy and believe that it will be easy because you will not be scared of it. Okay, then on the week of, please, please, please maintain your 2468 exercise. Even if you don't, you know, work on writing as much as you can in two minutes. Just work on building a setting based on personification, practicing skills that you know are going to be beneficial for you, but being peaceful and calm about it when you do it. These three things, I promise you, are the best things to do on the week of before if you are needing to practice your narrative writing. Um, someone asked what metaphors you can use for your writing practice. I personally suggest using ones that you've already done because you cannot write the same narrative um, again. You would use the you would use the metaphor you interpreted in a different light. Okay. Um, questions, questions, questions. Yes, I'm not going to show you the story. I'm going to send it into the WhatsApp. Um, we unfortunately do not have enough time for me to sit there and direct, uh, dissect my own writing. I would prefer you read it and use it as a standard or an example. Okay. Um, for anybody who missed the 2468 exercise, I will make sure that I send that booklet to Melvin or that particular PDF to Melvin so he can get it to you. Okay. Uh, there are still hands up. Jonathan, do you have a question? So 
it was an accident. That's okay. All right. Um. So, would I do a persuasive or a narrative for mock exam four? Ooh, mock exam four is good. I'm not sure if every. I'm. I'm. I think everyone's done it by now. But I would most likely it would go both ways for me because you can do so many things with that that image. And it, I'm just to confirm, it's the one with the chain and the. Oh, I hope everyone's on it. Um, but yeah, the, that particular prompt, um, I would go with either or. I don't think one would have been better than another. Personally, I actually thought of pers a persuasive topic for it before I thought of a narrative. But even for a narrative, I would have gone with like a, a noir and written from the metaphor. Anyways, uh, comprehension question, guys. Please go ahead and either put them into the chat, the questions you need to go through, or keep your hand up and ask away. Thana, I know you've been holding your hand up very, very, very patiently. Go ahead and ask me um, what you've been dying to ask me. This question was meant to be answered 40 minutes ago. I do apologize, Thana, but go ahead, ask me now. I forgot now. Wait, you didn't write it down? No. All right, guys, uh, Thana is a very, very, very good teaching point here. Um, before, and I hope you guys are doing this, if you have a question that one of your tutors cannot answer at that exact second because they are teaching class or they are maybe running a master class or ETC, write it down and ask them later. Do not forget it. Or, you know, it might end up being very, very useful for the exam. Thana, I'll give you a second. Think as hard as you can and then write it in the chat for me and I will answer it. Okay. All right. Um, can't she ask for two and 16 reading comprehension, please? I remember it now. All right, put it in the chat. Um, already on my way with the comprehension. Okay, so let me just get out the mock exam. Wait. Um, again, guys, I don't have the questions particularly, so you will need to write what the actual question is. I'll be able to remember the text. I will not be able to remember what question 16 was. Um, um, Maria, do you need to write it down in the chat for you? Uh, I, yeah, no, just until I can get the mock exam out. So I'm going to write the good. answer options as well. Um, oh, no, I got it. Okay, so you okay. asked for number two, right? And defore deforestation? Yeah. Okay, deforestation yeah. is best described as the answer should be B, the removal of trees and animal life from our landmass. The reason for that is deforestation, not just based on the text, but in general, focuses on the removal of trees and plant life as species, okay. actually, animal species. Yeah. No problem. And you said, Kanchi, Kanchi, Kanchi said 16. All right, let me jump to 16. Oh, no, not this one. Sorry, not 16. Okay, in the meantime, um, Asif, if you are looking to join the masterclass, there should be a link for you or go onto the Loyola website if they are still selling tickets. And I Hope, 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 hope they are because it's going to be fantastic for everyone to it's go along expensive. to. It's expensive. Yes, Maria. <laughs> yeah, the early um, bird is Oh, the early bird is over, but you can buy tickets from the Loyola site. So go ahead and check that out. Can you do question four of deforestation? Yes, I can. Advik. Kanchi, I will come back to you when you have the question that you want to ask. Question nine. four is number nine. Okay. Which of the following wasn't included in the text? The answer should be B. The far the important benefits to landmass of food and finance. Now remember what we said, Advik, about picking the broadest answer always. Okay. The reason that B is wrong is it's too specific. Specific. Okay. We know that there are more benefits to landmass than just food and finance. Okay. So it's not likely that that would be a correct answer. So it's not likely that it would be included in the text in general. Nothing that specific would be included. And it says the most important benefits are food and finance. Can we prove that to be true based on what we've read in the text? Absolutely not. But isn't it like implied basically? 
Because it says that um Um I, but I bet look at option A. Our landmass has social, economic and environmental benefits, right? Yeah. If you were to see if you were to read this question as which of the following was included, and I'm, this is just a very, very quick strategy that you can use sometimes, and this question it works with. Look at it the opposite way. If this which of the following wasn't included in the, was included in the text, you would pick based on what is implied in the the reading, you would pick the broadest answer, which is the social, economic, and environmental benefit. Okay. You would pick the broadest if it was included. Now, the reason that um, you wouldn't go in with implied as well, if you don't like working the opposite way and using the was included strategy. This is number four, guys. The reason B would be the best answer is because we're not looking for what is implied, Ardvik. The question begins with which, and we know that which is a part of our literal question. The answer is going to come directly from the text. Do not look for what is implied. Um, so do, 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 do. if something is implied, then it's most likely incorrect. So when we are picking questions in terms of what is included, look for what is directly involved in the text. If it is implied, then it is the wrong answer. So anything that is implied is most likely incorrect is what I'm trying to get to. So B would be incorrect. Sorry, I know that was a bit of a loopy loop in terms of explanation, but just think about it in terms of don't pick what is implied for what isn't included in a text, all right? Yeah, okay, thanks. No problem. All right, uh, guys, save any questions to do with creative or persuasive writing um, for a hands up. So anybody who has a comprehension question, please put it into the chat. Anybody who has a creative writing question, put it, you put your hands up and I'll get to you, okay? <laughs> okay, Thanos, the reason we don't use cliffhangers, we will get there, do not worry. In the mock example, nope. Can you do question 22? Yes, I absolutely can do question 22, Hannah. Um, 22, who is the text talking to? Um, that's the one you're after, Hannah? Yes. Um, I think I heard it, yes. So yes. who is the text talking to? The text is talking to I readers with brown, brown eyes. Oh. The reason the text is talking to readers with brown eyes is because it's aimed oh. at people who would not believe that brown eyes are special, okay? And most of the time, and based on what we understand, that it is going to be people who do have brown eyes. So it's most likely that this text is aimed at people with brown eyes. That would be the best answer. Thank you. No problem. Number 16. Number 16. Which of the following wasn't included? A. 16 is A. Now, if you look at the very, very beginning of the text about Bast, um, I don't have it with me, but if you look at the very, very beginning, I think even the first line, it should say she was first worshipped as a lioness and then as a cat. Can someone confirm or deny my like my memory on that, please? Um, yeah, that's and put true. It into the oh, that's right. That is very true. Yeah. first a wolf shaped as a lioness, then a cat. Yes, that's which true. is why the answer is A. She was the, which of the following wasn't included. She was first worshipped as the cat. That was not included because she, we know that she was first talked about as a lioness. Okay, 16, done. Can you please do 14? Of course I can. 14, Bast's role can be considered as consequential. Consequential means important. If inconsequential means not important, consequential must be important. We know she was important because she protected the sun god. The sun god who pulled the sun in his little boat across the sky, we know that we need the sun, therefore protecting the sun is very important. That was rough. Okay, next. Would you rather us read the question in the reading first or read than answer the question? Okay, since I have gone through this, there isn't the, a best way to approach it when it comes to that. 
your marks will not change if you read the question and then do the reading or if you read and then answer the questions. For me, what I personally like to do is I will read without looking at the questions first and I will read at a slow and calm pace, like quite slow. If I get eight minutes per text, I think I spend five minutes reading even if I don't need to. And then I answer my questions very, very, very quickly. Okay, moving on. Harry, what's going on? You said you got really stuck. Is in your frozen or in the comprehension? If you have a comprehension question, let me know. All right, Sharpie, number 19. Number 19, ooh. Now, number 19 is a follow-on from the previous week's cosmic energy, no? Yes, no. Was cosmic energy last week? Yes, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Cosmic energy was yeah. last week. And in cosmic energy, we learned that unfettered means unrestrained. So if you were not listening to the explanations last week, or if you did not Google the definition of unfettered after you sat the exam, it's not likely you would have been able to answer 19 accurately, unless you already knew it or took a wild guess and got it correct. Um, unfettered can be re replaced by its synonym, which is unrestrained. How do you be selfish in a bad way? Do you need to get to Hunter? Um, Hunter, no. When you are doing the worst writing exercise, you do not need to be charmed. The important thing to do is to take the skills you've learned and put them uh, to use. So you can take as long as you like with that exercise. I normally try to do it within the hour because well, you have more important like um, little activities that you should be doing for like math and other stuff. Oh, someone's singing. I'm so like I like love the singing, but not right now, guys. Okay, so um, da, 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 da. yeah, no need to time yourself for that, Hunter. Arty, what? The, okay, hold on. I can we please, please, please focus on comprehension number nineteen, please. Yeah, we went through nineteen. <sighs> Twenty-one, absolutely. What impression is created about brown eyes? The impression that is uh, created about brown eyes is that they are just as special as any other eye color, okay? The reason for this is because we know that blue eyes are always compared to the sky and deep, deep oceans and, you know, beautiful sapphire gems and things like that. So every other eye color has these very beautiful comparisons, right? So what it's saying is that brown eyes also have very, very nice comparisons. Now, if you give me a second, I'm just going to turn my light on. Okay. Yes, so the answer to number 21 for the person asking is D. They are just as important as any other eye color. That is what the poet is trying to tell us. Thanks. Um, I'm going to ignore any kind of writing questions and just look at the comprehension. I will do writing in two seconds. 20 through 17, sorry, almost missed it. Number 17, I think I went through seven, no. In regards to the text, a deity is C, a god or a goddess. That should have been um, implied multiple times. So they don't, re we know that in mythology, or in anything, a deity, not a deity, a deity is a god or a goddess that also comes down to your understanding of lexical choices and vocabulary. Can you do 14, please? Of course I can. 14. Nope, we've already done it. Um, Alina, 23. Brown eyes are best described as having underrated beauty. So beauty we don't always recognize as being important, but is very important. Thanks, Michard. It's so very sweet to say that. How do you do the chicken? Um, Michelle, I don't know how to change that, but even then, if you have a question, let me know. All right, 13, 18, and 21. All right. Da -da 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 -da. How are we doing for time? <gasps> 13. All right. 13 is. Hi, Maria. Uh, bye, guys. Remember, if you need to say goodbye, put it into the chat or um, just give me a, a little emoji and check out because I don't want the class to be disrupted. Thank you so much for coming today. It was very nice of you all.
Okay. Um, 18, we, I think we went through 18. No, we didn't. What is the main idea of this poem? To obscure thoughts on eye color. It's D, 21, now 21. Um, Based on the two questions you asked, the first two are literal. Uh, no, sorry, are inferential, really. So 13, no, 13 was literal. So you got the answer directly from the text. I gotta go. Remember what we said about saying goodbye. You either put it in the chat or you give me an emoji. Do not disrupt the class. 18, the main idea, pick the broadest answer. The broadest answer was D, 21. We already answered that. 28, all of the above. D, that is the broadest answer. Again, remember, guys, best answer when it comes to main purpose or actually nine out of 10 times is always the broadest answer for literal questions as well. 29, the mood of this poem is reflective because mm. it is talking based on experience. 30, it, is, it should be B, before is past, during is... Oh, no, sorry. It should be C, past, mm. present, and future. And 29 is, no, sorted. And 30. Yeah, 30 is C, sorry. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you guys for staying. I know we're going over time. So, TP's laptop? No, Tupsy? Sorry. I think it's Guru. Guru, is that you? Laptop. Oh, okay. Um, what's your question? Um, question number seven. Oh, if you have a comprehension question, put it in the chat. But um, do you have a creative writing question? I can't message you in the chat. I don't know why. Oh, that's okay. Okay, number seven. It's the aliens one, right? <laughs> um, what is the main purpose of Corner's response to the question? It should be that we can make prediction, but everything is based on what we explore in the future. So that would be C. Okay, number seven. Any any creative writing? Girl? Yes, I have a creative writing. All right, Deb, you yeah. got that creative writing. Oh, all right, Deb, you go, and then Ariana. Okay, party. Okay, yeah. So technically, um, my question is: when you look at a topic and you think like, okay, I, um, you you like, okay, I don't understand narrative, and let's think of persuasive, but you can only think of one reason, um. Like, would it be good to make it your moral? Because I actually didn't and got one good score and one bad score. So I don't know if it's good or bad using that. Oh, wait. So hold on. Hold on. Can you repeat that for me one more time? So technically, if I look at a topic and feel like um, I don't understand right now for a narrative, I think about a persuasive, but I can only think of one reason and it's something and then like if i i feel like it can be a moral like on the chain one i was just like mm -hmm. whoa and then i was just like chain freedom like you need to be a free bird all the time you need to be free to advance in life and stuff and i made that my moral would that yeah. like would it work yeah because like i did it and i got like one good score and one bad score in the two mock exams, two last ones. So, like, is there anything else instead of that? And you got two bad, you got two, wait, did you say you got two bad scores? No, one good, one bad. So, one okay, like well, in do you think that it was, it just came down to your moral being poor? Mm -hmm. That is why your marks were bad, or were there other factors in there that kind of maybe? <laughs> It was most um, of my, it was mostly my moral. Mostly your moral. Okay, so then maybe what you should do is cover your bases. So um, make sure that one, you're interpreting the metaphor the correct way. Because sometimes, like you were saying in that, that um, like you were saying in two seconds ago when you were explaining the, the bird one to me, you still said free like a bird. Be very careful about leaning into the literal with that. Um, and maybe focus on using it as an idea, not so much a moral. Have something else that's your moral there. A rule of thumb for me is I try to keep the prompt as inspiration for what I write about. 
rather than using it in a literal way, because I told you that I did both. I did in my gate exam, I wrote about it literally and I wrote about it metaphorically. Now, as someone who has gone through multiple specialized tests, I would only focus on it as a metaphor that inspires my writing, not anything I would include as a moral. I don't think that using it as a moral is the safest thing to do because sometimes it can be very, very difficult to include harder prompts as a moral, if that makes sense, Deb, so possibly not. Um, Bye. All right. And uh, Maria? Maria? All right, hold on. Someone needed question 12 answered, and I'll just do that very quickly for the comprehension, and then I will go to uh, Jaden. Yes. So 12 was, um, oh, ew, 12. Why should we take him seriously? Now, this comes down to your understanding of persuasive devices. The reason we should take him seriously is because if you look at the title, it says, John T. Horner, astrobiologist. He is an expert in this field. So he's an astrobiologist in his field of space and whatnot. So that makes him credible. That comes down to your understanding of persuasive devices. So the answer should have been C. Um, Jaden, you're next in terms of comprehend uh, in terms of creative writing. Ask away. Now, guys, if you do need to go, the class is over, but I am going to stay behind and answer questions because I understand that we rushed through a couple of things today. Jaden, go ahead. Can you hear me right now? I absolutely can. Yeah. If Wait, in the mock exam four, for the writing topic, would you do persuasive or narrative? For mock exam four, I think I answered that before, Jaden. I said that I had a persuasive idea before I had a narrative idea, but not one is better than another. It is based on your just whichever one you are strongest in if you feel like you are a better persuasive writing you stick with that don't change your mind now and if you feel you're better in narrative stick with that um but no I had a persuasive idea before I had a narrative so I cannot also, properly tell you mm -hmm. also, like, when you write a narrative how much direct speech, speech can you use is there a ratio yeah. of direct and indirect speech mm. That is a rough one. I honestly don't like a lot of it. So I think that's based on personal opinion, but then there are lots of stories that have quite a lot of indirect speech and direct speech. So balance is everything with that, Jaden. Make sure you're not doing too much of one thing and not enough of another thing. Okay. All right. Sorry. Bye, country. Bye, bye, guys. To everyone saying goodbye, goodbye, bye, 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 bye. Um, yeah. Next is... Maria. Maria. Um... Ariana, you go. Guys, remember, do not call out. Ariana, what's up? Um, my question's about the master class. So, you know yeah, how cool. next week we're doing mock exam five? Mm -hmm. So, and then the week after, which would normally be the marking week, I, um, are we going to be marking mock exam five at the master class? Marking it, if, in terms of me giving you advice on mock exam five after you do it, I will not be doing that. My master class is going to be focused on the strategies that I used in particular for the reading comprehension and writing that got me 99 and 87. So that is going to be the um, focus of my master class, nothing to do with anything we've done previously. Okay. My part of the master class. Yeah, so in terms of, if you need feedback on anything, I suggest you ask maybe one of the tutors after class if they can help you. If not, um, if not, look at the feedback on your creative writing and try to find a YouTube video from um, one of the classes that I've run for English or maybe a class on philosophy that um, Melvin has run and use that to solve the feedback, okay? Now, okay. the next one would be, next Thank you, is Pradika. <laughs> Read out the story at the end of the class, your one. Uh, yeah, so the one that I'm going to be sending is the one that I've personally written. So, yes, you can all judge my writing ability based on this one. So, yeah, a couple of PDFs are going to be put into the WhatsApp, and that's going to have a couple examples. Or okay. one example, I should say. Okay. Do you have any other questions, Pradika? Um, no. Uh, all right. Kanchi, you have your hand up. What's up? Nope. Okay. Next is Dion then. Dion, how can I help you with creative writing? I'm 
could you give us some examples for morals, like good morals too for your like, right um writing? Good morals for you to write in. Hmm. Yeah. Morals, 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 morals. What a good idea to do, um, Dion, is search up, and this is going to sound very, very basic, but go onto Google, you know, if you have an iPad or an iPhone or, you know, Samsung, whatnot, um, yeah. computer, search up good morals, okay, good morals, and then use the morals that you find. So let's say a moral is always have courage, right? Yeah. Um, practice writing a narrative based on always having courage. Now, I told Dev before not to use the metaphor as a moral because it can get very confusing. But the way you are practicing this is to incorporate what you learn from practicing the moral as a narrative. So if you write about having courage and you have like a character or, or a circumstance or an experience in which they have to go from being very shy to being very courageous and using their voice ETC, that is going to help you incorporate a moral naturally. So go onto Google, search up morals for narrative writing. Exactly this. I'm going to put this yeah. in the chat for anybody curious. And, um, like, for like example, like, you know, sharing is caring or like, and never be greedy. Is that like, for like simple morals? Is that like less marks? Because it's just simple. You can have the simplest moral, but if you have mature writing that brings the moral to life and good vocabulary, you are most likely going to get the marks that you deserve, or good marks for it. Uh, so okay, it's not so based on complex morals or simple, simple morals, right? Yeah. It's based on how you bring those morals to life. Neelam, I will get to you now. What's up, Neelam? You've had your hand up for a while. Um, I have two questions. Um, so yeah, of course. Go ahead. The first one is... Um, uh, um, so at, after everyone's answered their questions, um, can you do, um, can you revise the 246A, um, strategy? Um, yes, I can answer that for you right now. So with the 246A strategy, what you want to do, right, is you can, you can decide for yourself based on the strategy. It's very, very broad and it works on what you believe you need to focus on the most. So let's say you need to focus on descriptive language, right? So what you would do is in two, four, six, and eight minutes, you would set a timer and you would try to write, um, so set, set a timer and a goal, I should say. So if the goal is descriptive language, go, I am going to describe the ocean in two minutes using as much vocabulary that I have learned, so complex vocab, interesting vocab to bring it to life, okay? And in two minutes, what you wanna do after that is ask yourself a series of questions. What did I struggle with in the two minutes? Why did I struggle with it? And what do I need to do to not struggle with it? Most of the time, what you'll find is that the questions that you ask yourself are very easily answered by you. You do not need a tutor to guide you in this activity. This is to build on your skills. Um, and the reason that I like it so much is because it puts you under time pressure as well. You will really, really, really see what you need to work on when there is a timer going on. Because if I give people an hour to write a narrative, I see much better quality narrative. If I give you 20 minutes to write a narrative, the people panic and everything they've learned goes out the window and they just do whatever they can to put something on the page. So by consistently practicing smaller skills in two minutes, four minutes, six minutes, and eight minutes, you are pushing yourself for when you have to sit the gate, pretty much. Um, what I'll do, Neelam, is I'll send um, Melvin the just the, the PDF of that activity explained properly, and then you can go through that yourself. And next week, if you have any questions on that, you can ask me at the end of class. Yeah, thank you. And what was the second question? Uh, that's a call. Um, I'll get back to you then, Neelam. Okay. So, um, da -da 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 -da. Sierra? Um, I was wondering, um, if you, um, 
Um, will you explain more of um, this in the masterclass? Um, the morals in the masterclass? Yeah. Or yeah, the morals. The, no, I will not be touching on morals again because um, there, I think I've already run, not so much run a lesson all, but I did a lesson on theme and genre back in term one that you can access on YouTube. And I showed how through your teeth, how by including a theme in your narrative and focusing on a theme most yeah. of the time there are a set amount of morals that you include without trying so um I can't repeat things that I've already done just because we are on like a time limit at this point okay thanks yeah no problem whatsoever okay uh Yasana oh um for the morals um, like, wait, no, sorry, for the 2468 thing, um, do the, like, do you have to, I have two questions, do you have to do them over the days, like, two minutes for one day, four minutes for the next, and, like, etc.? cetera? Um, so if it is only, like, a certain skill, let's say your feedback is, um, you need to focus on your character emotions and it's just that and you're doing quite well, then yes, you would separate the two, four, six, eight exercise over a week. If you are someone who is really, really still struggling with narrative writing, I would suggest you do it every day. The whole thing, two, four, six and eight in one day. And my second question is, do they only have to be on like one skill every no, not at all. So you can focus on personifying setting in the two in the four minutes. You can focus on writing two hooks in two minutes. Whatever the goal is, you can uh, attempt to achieve and leave it broad. There aren't very many rules to this exercise as long as you maintain two, four, six, eight, and a routine as you do so. So if um, what I mean by a routine is if you choose to do more than one, make sure that you do the whole thing. So you do the two, four, six eight a night but if you choose to focus on one thing such as uh, one particular skill I would think the best way to do that would be to break it up over um, multiple days so you do two minutes working on a hook um, such as a rhetorical question four minutes working on creating a quote six minutes on a quote and a introduction paragraph that's full of descriptive language that kind of leads on from the quote. And then the eight minutes, what you would do is you would write maybe a quote, an introductory paragraph, and might include a rising action as well. Whatever your goal is, um, align it with the two, four, six, eight, and then start pushing yourself. So if you are capable of writing a rising action in four minutes, get good enough to write a rising action or most of the rising action in two minutes. So work your way backwards as well. Okay, thanks. All right, next is um, Guru or Tapsi. Tapsi, all right, what's your question? How do I write my, how do I write my um, writing more metaphorically? Because when I did my narrative last week, they were, they were in the feedback to write it using more metaphors. Using more metaphors or use the prompt as a metaphor? Which one was it? Yeah, use a prompt as what? a metaphor. Okay, so um, this, there are steps to metaphor interpretation. My favorite ones um, when you're practicing is to one, write what you see to attach meaning three form ideas so now this doesn't make sense without an image right but what you'd want to do is I think three or four lessons ago there was a lesson that I wrote on how to properly interpret a metaphor all right so you take the metaphor and you apply these steps to it and you practice this way so that you're able to on the day do it much quicker what you want to do is make sure that you always, always interpret the metaphor. So with the prompt you just got mocked for, it was a chain and a bird, right? The bird's breaking from the chain. Would you write about a chain or someone being like chained up or bird being chained up? A bird being chained up. No, you wouldn't. You would write about how someone feels trapped in a, 
in a certain situation. My favorite one is always writing about people who grow up in very small towns. And when they feel trapped in these small towns, they do something or they attempt to break free and move to the city and, and go get an education or go to university. That's how I would have written about that metaphor, breaking free for, from something that has trapped you for a very long time. Okay, um, I hope that helped, but go look at the YouTube video. I promise it'll help you a bit more. All right, Artie, you're the last one. And then Neelam, oh wait, Neelam, you put it into the chat. This one was actually for the reading comprehension. Yep, go for it. So when you scroll up, like you wrote under the confidence section, worst story positive and practice, like what do you mean? Oh, this isn't for comprehension. This is for constructing confidence before your narrative engage. What does it mean? Oh, right. Um, okay. So this is three things that I did when I didn't feel, when I got like a touch bit nervous um, before my narrative writing. I used to do it with my persuasive because I never really liked persuasive in that plan. So what you do is you take the worst story you've ever got done. Like let's say you got four out of 50, right? You take that narrative. Then without setting a timer, you pretty much rewrite it with all the skills that you have learned from the entire term. So you pretty much self-edit and go, oh my God, look at me. I didn't even have a conflict or I had too much conflict. And you rewrite the narrative to focus on the things that you know are wrong because it builds your confidence because you're able to see what was where you started and now where you've ended up, okay? So that's the first one. You rewrite the story and maybe you experiment with certain things that you didn't experiment with before, like personifying the setting, personifying a feeling, ETC. The next thing is um, positive. What did I mean by positive? No, it wasn't positive outlook. Oh, yes. So um, with one of the comprehension strategies, it was, um, oh, geez the five second rule where you see a text that you think is boring, you have five seconds to change your mind because you need to be able to retain information. And when our brain thinks that information is important, it holds the information and then makes it easier for us to answer the question. So you cannot do this with the prompt, right? But you can build confidence in, in metaphor interpretation. So one of the things you can do is you can take the hardest prompt you have ever gotten for a mock exam or throughout Loyola, and I want you to interpret it then. Come up with a metaphor for it and see um, how difficult it was and go, oh my God, I just did that. I just interpreted a very, very difficult metaphor and then consider yourself to go, okay, well, nothing is ever gonna be that hard or nothing will ever be as hard as this. Whatever I get in gate is not gonna be that difficult. If you have a positive outlook on your skills, if you go, wait, I just did this so easy. I just learned this so quickly. You're more likely to not be scared or feel daunted by the prompt you get in mocks. Now, the, the in the gate exam, because the reason I say this is um, we practice all these really, really hard metaphor interpretations, right? We have chains and birds and people climbing mountains, BTC. But then you might get a prompt in the gate that's just a fishbowl with a fish in it. And you've done all these complex, complex things that now you've seen something so simple, you're no longer gonna be afraid by it, okay? So pretty much what I mean by positive is just remove the fear before you look at the prompt, because if you are a little bit confident, your skills will kick in for the better. And the next thing is practice. So pretty much the two, four, six, eight exercise would be the best way to do that. Um, I hope that kind of clears it up in what those three things mean. Yes, thank you. No problem whatsoever. Um, guys, I hope nobody else has any other questions because we are way over time. Thank you so much for staying on and asking questions. Next week, I'll be able to go through any that I missed. Good luck for Mark's five. And, oh, someone, I think someone's calling my name. Neelam, is, what's up, Neelam? Um, you haven't answered my question in the chat. Uh, can you write a more? And um, what do you mean as a saying, Neelam? Um, like, a. You know how um, Roald Dahl and lots of other famous writers like write sayings, like um, to explain it. Um, you 
Yeah, well, Are you saying like something your character says, Neela? No, like um, you know, um, I'll I'll answer it next um next Zoom class if. Oh yes, can you please write it down? Because I actually am very interested to know what you mean by that. All right. Anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of your weeks. Good luck for Mox Four Five, and I will see you next Sunday.